It's great to be here. My parents are also in the audience. What about Mama? Like, thumbs and Adi. They're up there. <clears throat> Nvidia has been coming to Taiwan for over 30 years. This is the home of many of our treasured partners and dear friends. Over the years, you have seen NVIDIA grow up and seen us accomplish many exciting things and have been partnered with me all along the way. Today, we're gonna to talk about where we are in the industry, where we're gonna go, announce some new products, exciting new products and surprising products that open new markets for us, creates new markets, new growth. We're gonna talk about great partners and how we're gonna develop this ecosystem together. As you know, we are at the epicenter of the computer ecosystem, one of the most important industries of the world. And so it stands to reason when new markets has to be created, we have to create it starting here at the center of the computer ecosystem. And I have some surprises for you. Things that you probably wouldn't have guessed. And then of course, I promise I'll talk about AI. <laughs> and we'll talk about robotics. The NVIDIA story is the reinvention of the computer industry. In fact, the NVIDIA story is also the reinvention of our company. As I said, I've been coming here for 30 years. Many of you have been through many of my keynotes. Some of you, all of them. And just as you reflect on the conversation, the things we talked about in the last 30 years, how dramatic we changed. We started out as a chip company with a goal of creating a new computing platform. And in 2006, we introduced CUDA, which has revolutionized how computing is done. In 2016, 10 years later, we realized that a new computing approach has arrived. And this new computing approach requires a reinvention of every single layer of the technology stack. The processor is new. The software stack is new. It stands to reason the system is new. And so we invented a new system. A new system that on the day I announced it at GTC 2006, no one understood what I was talking about and nobody gave me a PO. That system was called DGX1. DGX1, I donated the first one to a nonprofit company called OpenAI. And it started the AI revolution. Years later, we realized that in fact, this new way of doing software, which is now called artificial intelligence, is unlike traditional ways of running software. Whereas many applications ran on a few processors in a large data center, we call that hyperscale. This new type of application requires many processors working together, serving queries for millions of people. And that data center would be architected fundamentally different we realized there were two types of networks. One, for north-south, because you still have to control the storage, you still have to have a control plane, you still have to connect to the outside. But the most important network was going to be east-west. The computers talking to each other to try to solve a problem. We recognized the, most, the best networking company in east-west traffic 
for high-performance computing, large-scale distributed processing, a company that was very dear to our company and very close to our heart, a company called Mellanox, and we bought them five years ago, 2019. We converted an entire data center into one computing unit. And you heard me say before, the modern computer is an entire data center. The data center is a unit of computing. No longer just a PC, no longer just the server. The entire data center is running one job. And the operating system would change. NVIDIA's data center journey is now very well known. Over the last three years, you've seen some of the ideas that we're shaping and how we are starting to see our company differently. No company in history, surely no technology company in history, has ever revealed a roadmap for five years at a time. No one would tell you what is coming next. They keep it as a secret, extremely confidential. However, we realized that NVIDIA is not a technology company only anymore. In fact, we are an essential infrastructure company. And how can you plan your infrastructure, your land, your shell, your power, your electricity, all of the necessary financing around all over the world? How would you possibly do that if you didn't understand what I was going to make? And so we described our company's roadmap in fair detail, enough detail that everybody in the world can go off and start building data centers. We realize now we are an AI infrastructure company, an infrastructure company that's essential all around the world. Every region, every industry, every company will build these infrastructures. And what are these infrastructure? These infrastructure, in fact, not unlike the first industrial revolution, when people realized GE, Westinghouse, Siemens, realized that there was a new type of technology called electricity, and new infrastructure has to be built all around the world. And these infrastructure became essential part of social infrastructure. That infrastructure is now called electricity. Years later, this is during all of our generation, we realized there was a new type of infrastructure. And this new infrastructure was very conceptual, very hard to understand. And this infrastructure called information. This information infrastructure, the first time it was described, made no sense to anybody. But we now realized it is the internet. And every internet is everywhere. And everything is connected to it. Well, there's a new infrastructure now. This new infrastructure is built on top of the first two. And this new infrastructure is an infrastructure of intelligence. I know that right now, when we say there's an intelligence infrastructure, it makes no sense. But I promise you, in 10 years time, you will look back and you will realize that AI has now integrated into everything. And in fact, we need AI everywhere. And every region, every industry, Every country, every company, all needs AI. AI has now part of infrastructure. And this infrastructure, just like the internet, just like electricity, needs factories. And these factories are essentially what we build today. They're not data centers of the past. A $1 trillion industry providing information and storage, supporting all of our ERP systems and our employees, it's, that's a data center, a data center of the past. This is similar in the sense that it came from the same industry. It came from all of us, but it's going to emerge as something completely different, completely separated from the world's data center. And these AI data centers, if you will, are improperly described. They are in fact AI factories. You apply energy to it and it produces something incredibly valuable. And these things are called tokens. To the point where companies are starting to talk about how many tokens they produced last quarter and how many tokens they produced last month. Very soon, we'll be talking about how many tokens we produce every hour, just as every single factory does. 
And so the world has fundamentally changed. 